Bad MMA Math is back with the latest reaction video. This time it's UFC Vegas 78, Dos Sanjos versus Luque. A great main event on paper on what was a shit stack card. Uh, did this exceed low expectations or was this the bucket of shit we all suspected it would be? Let's find out right now. Uh, how bad is Veronica Hardy? Seriously. Uh, anyway, Miller looked like a crackhead on the scale and I was feeling extremely smug in my pick. Uh, I give her some credit though, she walked straight across the octagon and went straight after Santos. Not a bad strategy against someone making their debut and probably shitting their pants in there. Uh, too bad she has no skill or it might have worked. Uh, then they both exchanged the sloppiest and most uncoordinated terrible pillow punches I think I've ever seen in the octagon. No hyperbole. Uh, Miller had enough in the tank for about a minute and a half and then just completely faded. Uh, cut her. Uh, TKO for Santos. Uh, there was a lot I liked about this fight. Uh, firstly, uh, sweeps and trips are so underutilized in this game and Blackshade did a great job landing his first takedown with one. He probably didn't need to be that flashy. Johnson was taken down 13 times in two of his contender series fights. Uh, I felt like Damon was using this fight to kind of showcase some stuff. And this was exemplified when he had him on the ground and transitioned into a twister. Third, ended up being the third in UFC history. He did leave himself open to getting bombed on with elbows on the ground. So if he pulls that shit against someone actually good, he's fucked. But in this instance, they set up the final trap to complete the twister. Uh, it's a win, they all count. Total mismatch though. Alright, there was a lot to enjoy about this one and it had nothing to do with the fighting. Know what I mean? Uh, I called this one perfectly. Uh, Ruiz is a decent wrestler, but her skill set plays right into Amarim's. Uh, predictably, it resulted in a ground beating, which Amarim was happy to dish out. Ground and pound, RNC attempts, and even an armbar in the first round. Uh, that was a 10-8 or a 10-1 probably in women's MMA. It was total domination. Uh, second round, Ruiz ate a head, head kick and ended up on top only to be swept easily and dominated again. Uh, Ruiz never gave up despite being put in a spliff for the whole fight. First time I've seen a corner ask if she wanted the towel thrown in. I kind of respect that. They knew she was cooked. Uh, third round, Ruiz had some time on top, giving us all some excellent views. Uh, Amarim got bored, swept her again, and finished with ground and pound. All right, I know Parisian is a fat barrel of monkey spunk, but he's pretty durable, and I expected this to go a little bit longer than it did. Uh, Bidet basically lit him up on the feet, took him down, and then found a pretty easy Kimura. Uh, this guy is strong and on a hell of a streak. Earned a ton of fish in what was his most impressive performance to date. Uh, for a big dude, he's got decent cardio and will be a problem for the rest of the bottom feeder heavyweights. Above that, I don't really see too much for him. Nice performance though. Alright, this was my prize pick of the night. Uh, Dolgarian was the underdog in this one and I thought it was some kind of Vegas trickery. Uh, they clearly didn't watch the, the tape on this man. Uh, Marshall is a decent fighter, but he got fucked up in this one. He did crack up Dolgarian fairly early and that just pissed him off. He showed his elite wrestling credentials, took Marshall down, and had really nasty, nasty punishing short elbows on the ground. He stayed a little bit patient, managed to get some distance, and then towards the end of the round, after dominating on top for four minutes, smelled a finish and just went for it. Uh, excellent debut win, and one that cashed big for me. The ground and pound was immense. Uh, he won't be an underdog in his next fight. Yeah, this was just a lamb to slaughter. No credit for picking this one correctly. Uh, McKinney just beat him up. There was nothing technical about this fight whatsoever. Breeden is just not Lewis UFC level. He was put in there to get molly whopped and he delivered for the bet in Mandem. Uh, I also find this funny because it will give McKinney a massive confidence boost and he will be more confident going into the next one. And I'm going to be licking my chops like a wolf and waiting to get paid again when he gets smoked. Uh, post fight interview was kind of funny. I think we see him back in a month or so. And fair play, uh, for that's the best way to kind of get your show money up. I predict a fun journeyman career for McKinney. This was one of the locks of the card for me. I feel quite bad for Baze. Uh, I got cheated on once, but I was nine. A uh, little hole broke my heart and it was cold shit with the females from then on. Uh, Baze is actually a skilled dude, but he has one of the worst chins I've ever seen. And the UFC kind of did him dirty putting him, putting him in there with this man. Uh, McGee is someone I really like as a personality and a fighter. He stayed patient, eventually cracked JP, who fell forwards. When that happens, you know it's over. He showed what a nice guy he was though by not continuing to ruthlessly pound the fuck out of him when it was clearly over. 
Uh, JP won't be fighting in the UFC again. I'm pretty certain of that. Uh, you can't gym a chin, homie. Uh, seven fights in and no decisions. Right on. Yeah, this was a terrible fight. This is where the card kind of started to get stinky a bit. Uh, it doesn't deserve any kind of breakdown. I said it would go over 1.5. I said the majority of the fight would either be in the clinch or hugging. I said Fremd would win a decision. He was a fucking minus 300 favorite. Think about that. Uh, first decision of the night and it stunk to high hell. High hell. Uh, I'm done here. Uh, main card then started to be on the verge of ruining what started out as a really surprising card. Uh, I thought Nezichukwi won the first round by spamming hard leg kicks. Despite being taken down at the end of the round. Not that he deserved a round either way. I don't think either of them did. Uh, Dawson then won the second round, oh, sorry, Dobson then won the second round by being more active and landing a little more. Very little damage done by either man, uh, man in the opening two. A lot of strikes were landing on the guard. Uh, third round, uh, Dobson basically fell into a takedown and laid on him for the entirety of the round, uh, doing fuck all. Uh, this was an absolute stinker. Uh, I expected Nezachuku to be a little bit better. He wasn't. Yeah, fuck this fight. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit salty about this one. The fight started off a little bit tentatively. Lucindo landed a few shots early and uh, Viana clearly felt the power and knew what time it was. She did land a takedown and get top control that she held for a few minutes. But her inability to do fuck all on top was really telling. And it was clear where the power and where the threat lay. Uh, ref got rightly annoyed and stood them up. And then Lucindo ended the round pretty strongly. Uh, second round Lucindo started to open up a little knowing she could handle what was coming back and use this to get a takedown. Uh, a minute from the end of the round, she latched up a choke and an easy tap. Uh, I picked this to go over 2.5 and it was the last leg on one of my two parlays, so I was fuming. Chris Dawkins needs to stop fighting black guys. Real talk. Uh, he did land a few nice uh, combinations early, but it was clear Khalil had the big power advantage. Uh, this was exemplified when they went into the clinch and Dorcas was frozen like... Never mind. Uh, they broke and exchanged a little before Khalil landed a left-handed bomb straight on the button and Dorcas just crumbled. Uh, didn't show the same kindness as my boy Megiddo and just teed off as the piggy covered up on the ground. Uh, nasty shit. Cashed out my last parlay though so I was buzzing. Alright, despite uh, Dawoodoo's best effort to make this fight fucking suck, this for me was fight of the night so far and ended up being the fight of the night in general. Now the decision was a little bit contentious for some and I'm going to build to that. Fight was very technical standing in the first I thought Cub landed the more damaging strikes, but went to the st stool uh, leaking crimson, so the visual meant Hakeem might have snuck it in the judge's eyes, or so I thought. Uh, second round, Darudu clinched a lot as I predicted, and edged around, but Cub had nice moments landing shots to the midsection, and seemed to hurt him towards the end of the round. Now the third round, Hakeem tried to clinch and got taken down, which I said Cub should do from the start. Uh, personally, I thought Cub won the fight. I said it would go the distance, and that Hakeem might edge it on the judges' scorecards, but he tried to make it boring, so fuck him. Uh, Cub admitted that he thought he lost the fight and was plus 800 as the fight closed. I thought he won the first, I thought he won the third, but it was a close fight and easily the most enjoyable fight on the card. Well, I don't want to say this was a bad fight, but it was partly disappointing and definitely surprising. Uh, massive sections of this were spent in the clinch, with both, both men painfully evenly matched. For me the fight was fun one to a sorry for me the fight was one due to a few simple factors. Uh the Sanjos clearly felt he had a massive advantage in the clinch and takedown game, and he just didn't. Yet he relentlessly stuck to this game plan. Stupid. Uh, the reach disadvantage the Sanjos had was mostly negated as he stayed in close, and he looked quicker in boxing range, but he didn't take advantage of this enough or switch his game plan when it wasn't working out. Uh, kind of understood this as Luke can obviously crack. I said this would go to a decision and that the Sanjos would clinch and make it ugly, but instead that it was Luke that adopted that game plan, and the Sanjos had no answer for that and refused to change his game plan. Even technical fight, but with most of it in the clinch, it was ultimately a bucket of total shit. Alright, so this took my record to 218-104. Again, I'm stuck at 67%. This won't be a surprise to anyone who's a regular on this channel. I thought this was a decent card. Main card kind of stunk it up a little bit. We had a few contentious moments, but generally, I really enjoyed this card. Next week, we've got uh, O'Malley versus Sterling, which I'm really looking forward to. We did lose Cody Garbrandt off that card, which is a little bit disappointing, but we truck on. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Wei Li. And yeah, that should be a very, very good card. Looking forward to breaking it down on Tuesday. Have a great rest of the weekend.